For the last part of this tutorial, what we need to end up doing is we need to make it to where when you type something inside of the text box here and click on the submit button, that it ends up appearing in your text field down below. Before we do that, where it says item one, I'm gonna double click on and just remove that text. The reason being is because I initially had this just as a placeholder value, but every time you click submit, we're gonna end up having another item show on one line and then the next time you submit, it's gonna show up on the next line after that. So I don't want this placeholder text to be there when our application starts. After I successfully taken that away, I'm gonna go over here to my did tap button function on line 19. You'll see that there's an open curly bracket and a closing one. I'm gonna go right in between on line 20. And what I wanna end up doing is I wanna write a constant here. I also wanna write a conditional. So I'm going to start off with the word if, and then writing a constant in Swift 4 is the word let, and we're going to name this constant text. What we want it to equal is basically the UI field that we ended up making earlier. So if you look up here on your line, you see text add is your text field. So we're going to end up going with text add, and then we're going to call upon what property we're seeing or what we want so we're going to type in the word text now this is going to break into another if statement so we're going to need to make another curly bracket and swift by the way automatically makes a second one for you which is nice and then on this line what i want to do is call upon another if statement and i'm calling upon the constant that we just made called text and I'm going to put two equal signs, which means whatever I type in this submission box is going to end up equaling the exact thing that we typed in there. In order to get that, we just do double quotation marks back to back, which will create the text that we end up putting in there, also known as a string. From there, we're going to end up doing one more curly bracket. We're going to go down and we're going to end up typing in return because we want that value to end up returning to you. And once we have the return value successfully there, we're going to go down one more line to line 23, and then we're going to hit return from there. On line 24, what we want to do is we want to call upon our text field to start storing this data. So we're going to type in text field dot text, because that's the type of property it's transferring over. And we're going to call upon the append option here. And once we do that, we're gonna do open and closed parentheses. And we're gonna do a double quotation mark, a backslash, another open parentheses, type in the word text with a closed parentheses, a backslash N, and another double quotation mark. What this will do is this is gonna end up taking the text that you wrote inside of your submission box, and it's going to put it right down here. If it's the second time that you're putting something in the submission box, this backslash N is going to automatically create a second line for you. So the next few things we need to do is we need to officially add the text. So we're gonna go down here and type in text add dot text equals the same string you wrote earlier. And then last but not least, when we're done, we want the keyboard to disappear. So we're gonna do text add dot resign first responder. And that should be all of the scripting you have to do. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna go up to my debug. And you can see up here, you can change a bunch of different options. But if you already have your stuff set up, you could in fact click on the play button here and it's gonna start building this program for you. Now sometimes this does take a while and sometimes when it ends up showing the debugger, it'll actually be directly on the desktop. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna cut the video off here, let it overall load on the other screen and then start capturing what it looks like in the simulator. The other great thing about Xcode is once you wanna debug or test an application, you can actually end up picking specific settings for different iOS devices as well as different simulators. So what you can see here is that we just got a generic iPhone 8 going on right here. It's actually a plus size. And you can take a look right here, my to-do list applications right here. 
If I were to left click on it, it's going to open it up. And from here, I can end up testing it. So let's click inside of our text box and let's end up typing in something like, this is a test. And once I type that in, if I click on submit, you'll see that it actually stores that data down below. Now let's just make sure my second line break works when I type in something else. Let's type in, this is my second line. If I click submit again, it adds it right below. So there you have it, a very simplistic application, a very easy to-do list, and it didn't really take much coding or knowledge or experience. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy this series, please give it a like and give some comments down below. That way, if there is an audience for this type of stuff, I will make a full tutorial and a full in-depth guide to Swift 4 programming language along with Xcode. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed everything you watched and learned. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, keep on educating.